Good morning. Why did Jesus say, Blessed are those who mourn? Our reading today takes us to Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 17 through 22. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider and call for the mourning women, that they may come, and send for skillful wailing women, that they may come. Let them make haste and take up a wailing for us, that our eyes may run with tears and our eyelids gush with water. For a voice of wailing is heard from Zion, how we are plundered. We are greatly ashamed because we have forsaken the land, because we have been cast out of our dwellings. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O women, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth. Teach your daughters wailing, and everyone her neighbor a lamentation. For death has come through our windows, has entered our palaces to kill off the children, no longer to be outside, and the young men no longer on the streets. Thus says the Lord, Even the carcasses of men shall fall as refuse on the open field, like cuttings after the harvester, and no one shall gather them. The invasion that's coming is going to be epic. The corpses are going to be stacked up on the right and on the left. Our reading today highlights mourning, the women who are left behind. You may know that in Bible times, when someone died, they hired professional mourners that would make the, as big of a noise, as big of a ruckus as they could. And what Jeremiah envisions is so many dead, so many dead stacked up across the land that even the professional mourners, there's not enough of them. So the mothers have to teach the daughters how to mourn like the professional mourners. They have to teach their friends and neighbors how to, join, how to mourn like professional mourners, to join them in mourning for all the innumerable dead after the invasion that comes from Babylon. There's a very powerful word that pertains to this over here at Joel 2, verses 12 and 13. Now therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. Do you remember that Ecclesiastes even says that the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning? It's true. And this is contrasted there with feasting and laughter. There's a certain tendency for the recognition of mortality and spiritual things to lift a heart into a place where it can hear divine things. We see this in occasions of death. There's usually not too much laughing out in the parking lot at funerals. Death is certainly a, a strong event to take place. And yet it's only because of the strong mercies of God that we even have these tiny portions of life. Those are gifts from heaven. I mean, let's face it, humans are born on spiritual life support. You and I live in an age of great excess. Excess in spending, excess in consuming, excess in telling others what to do. But for this troubled hour, sobriety is best. Perhaps through mourning, some hearts were reached in Jeremiah's time. And we'll be reached the same way in our time if we reconnect with the high God of heaven. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for your, your great watching over us. Build us up, Lord. Bring us back from the silly things we become invested in, the things that loom in front of us. They seem so large to us. They sort of take over our life. But Lord, the things of truth, the things of the conscience, those are the things, Lord, we want you to feed in us. Draw us toward your throne. Draw us toward your heart, Lord. Help us to see Jesus crucified on the cross and be drawn to that unselfish goodness there. Lord, we ask for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who mourn are often led to consider the spiritual realities that they're facing, and many will be led to the throne of God. God be with you today in this intense and yet joyful and yet solemn time.